Dylan, you start. Okay. If you had to change one thing about Max gameplay, <laughs> what would it be? The young one, attach! Attach, lights it up. It's your New York Subliners. What's going on, everybody? TP here, bringing you the next episode of The Barracks, presented by Metro by T-Mobile, the number one brand in prepaid. Today, we're going one-on-one -on -one with Attach from the New York Subliners. He's a 2015 world champion and all-around lethal player. One of the best SMG players in Call of Duty history. I remember playing against this guy. He's a menace on the map, can kind of do it all, has had a lot of success in his Call of Duty career thus far. Dylan. What's going on, buddy? How you feeling? What's up, Tyler? I'm feeling good. That was some great gas. So after that you intro, like that? I'm feeling even better. Thank you. Love it, man. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I want to pick your brain a little bit about recent events within the CDL and sort of your rise in the Call of Duty scene thus far. We're starting off with an interview segment called Game Changers. You guys got put together, and my thought of your team when you originally formed the roster for Modern Warfare was you guys were going to be like an above average team. I didn't think you guys were going to be, you know, anything super crazy right away. You had a rocky start to the season, but then you sort of make that roster change. You bring in Mac instead of Zero, and you guys start to see some success. Three tournaments in a row, kind of improving your gameplay a lot. You are looking really good versus some of the lower tier teams in the league, but when you guys face the heavy hitters, you tend to struggle. For where you guys are at in the league, wh wh where's your head at? How do you feel your team has been progressing thus far? I feel like we made a really good or really big strides ever since we picked up Mac. Uh, we go game five with all the top teams like FaZe. We went game five with them twice. Um, Florida, we went game five with them at the last event. Uh, choked a 2-0 lead, so that one was tough to make it to the grand finals. But uh, we're, we're making steps in the right direction. Our game, our gameplay in hardpoint. Domination and SND is slowly improving. Some more than others, but we still have to keep working. But we're definitely making uh, the progress and the steps we need to during this time of the season, especially with the uh, Call of Duty Championship coming up. That's awesome, man. It's all about the practice, especially at this point in the season, too. In terms of the roster changes that's gone down, I feel like a lot of teams predicted the meta of this game, the weapon meta, to be a little bit differently. And the fact that it shifted toward the, towards this super heavy SMG style uh, has affected teams a lot. When you made the roster change uh, for Mac, what is the biggest thing that impacted your team's play style? I think um, we just got a player in Mac who was super comfortable and it fit like our play styles. I know Trey, Zero, when he was on our team, he was trying to like be like the objective player and do all like the dirty work. And he's like a really talented player, but at the time that just wasn't working for him. And he was honestly just trying to like do too much and he's a really good player. Right. So when he went to London, like he's playing is more natural honestly just like slain running around the map and he's been playing really well so it was good to see him go find some success and when we got mac it just kind of felt everything on the map felt like smoother i don't really know exactly how yeah. to explain it but the rotations like everything just felt a little bit better when we got mac and uh sometimes just teams don't mesh well our old team didn't mesh too well uh we had times where we could have made it a little bit further in tournaments but right when we got mac you kind of like felt like a switch they were like yeah it just felt right yeah, it felt like your guys' pace just sort of take a step up as a whole to the next level uh, has really helped you out a lot, too. Kind of a good call on Zero, too. Uh, it, it's funny how it works sometimes where you have these all these fantastic players, and a lot of the time it's figuring out who is the best for a specific team for a specific role at a, at a certain time. So the fact that he was able to make a transition over there and and he's been playing really well so far, like you said. Yep. So it's interesting to see where it, it might not have worked super well for your team, but he's still thriving in another spot. It, it's kind of cool to see uh, both parties uh, uh, benefiting from a roster change like that. Yeah. Um, you've always been known for a faster place pay style with a SMG uh, being lethal with a sniper in S and D as one of the core players on your roster. How much pressure do you put your, on yourself to, to play at like a high level? Uh, have you been happy with your performance recently on an individual level? What, where's the pressure at for you? Individually, um, I feel like I've been playing pretty well. Nothing like amazing. Uh, just trying to do what I have to do for my team, whether it's sit in the hill sometimes, go get the spawns, or become that slayer on the cut, just getting a lot of kills, making the other team spawn out as far as I can. Uh, I feel like with this game and it being 5v5, everyone kind of has to like step up and do 
their job in the situation when it's at hand. So you kind of just have to be able to recognize those situations when sometimes you have to sit back and hold this lane to let your teammates go over here and uh, do what they got to do over there. So really just yeah. stepping up and knowing when to make the right play because I know I could get any two-piece, any three-piece, but I really uh, like teaming with accuracy, and I learned a lot from JCap back then about like how yeah. to actually play smart because – Talent can only get you so far. If you're playing someone and they are just as talented as you and they're in a better position, they're most of the time going to kill you. So just really working on my positioning and having help from my teammates and uh, team to learn has like really made a big impact in my career and made me want to become a better and smarter Call of Duty player. That's awesome. Love to hear it. The, the leadership from Accuracy coming in a little bit there. Um, speaking specifically on this title to that point as well, um, do you feel like your play style is benefited in this sort of title how are you mesh with modern warfare is, is i guess what i'm trying to ask you uh i feel good playing modern warfare it's actually one of the most different cods for the respawn with the way the squad spawns work now like yeah. this is a whole new spawn system people thought like it was just like the normal call of duty spawns like squad spawns no. happen and it was kind of like a reset where everyone had to relearn a whole new system and some teams learned quicker than others but once everyone caught on you kind of saw like who can make the most progress in the right direction to yeah. becoming the best. And uh, I think we're that's what we're doing right now, and we're just trying to keep on learning. Uh, there's obviously a couple updates here and there that changes the yeah. game a little bit. So you want to stay on top of it, be practicing as much as you can, and getting the most or the best practice too. So it's all about learning sure. and trying to stay ahead of the competition. And a lot that goes into staying ahead of the competition is your practice schedule. What's your daily grind like right now? Obviously, we have champs coming up. You have a big tournament, big tournaments coming up uh, to end out the year. Uh, how many hours are you putting in lately? And who's the number one grinder on your team, would you say? Who's putting in the most time? Um, we have a couple grinders on our team for sure. Uh, we all play a good amount. Definitely would say we're one of the teams that plays the most, like all five players consistently. I know some right. other teams like will have people who just like to play computer games to like relax or some other game just to relax, which is completely fine. Everyone has yeah. like the thing that works for them. As long as you're putting the time in during the practice time, that's all you got to do. But uh, we usually get on around like 1, one thirty, and watch a couple of odds, some like hard points, maybe some search and destroys. Our coach, Revan, he finds those and will show us before and we can kind of like pinpoint what we want to work on on this map or this specific rotation that day and if it's snd we'll have snd scrim later on after the respawns and try and work on our search and destroy so we start at two like start playing at two and uh we'll end at like seven seven thirty eight ish depending on if we're playing two respawn scrims or like two respawns and then an snd after that it all right. really depends and then uh probably take an hour or two break get some food, relax for a little bit, and turn the stream back on and hop in some Pro 10s and just try and get the extra reps in, um, keep the gun skill on point, keep everything just flowing well and uh, staying consistent for all these tournaments coming up. I like that a lot, um, especially starting with VODs. Uh, from my experience from coaching and things like that too, uh, I feel like when you put off VOD until later on in the day, it's it's hard to keep yeah. that same sort of focus. Whereas if you get on fresh and you start your day with it, it gets you, gets you in the right mindset yeah. to you know a little bit better of what you're you know you have active goals throughout exactly. the maps on specific situations yeah i like that a lot and uh props to your coach revan i'm sure he's an absolute beast at what he does too he's real good so we're going back now i want you to right. to recap your your cod journey for us um i remember you young gun back in the day back in i don't know i guess ghost is probably the first time i uh I, i've heard of you and you started making waves in the scene uh when did you actually start playing call of duty and how did you sort of build up that momentum and start to make some crazy waves especially in 2015 uh i first started playing call of duty in i think it was like 2007 when cod 4 got released uh i was just playing with my friends from my town one of my friends actually told me what game battles was and i was like oh my god this is so sick like the best yep. players in the world play on this i used to go on the forums and all like the team ladders seeing all like those old school teams having insanely good, good days, records man. oh my god the gv days i miss those days um but yeah I just started playing from there and once i learned about game battles i started watching some live streams i would watch like cod 4 nationals and some other events like right? they weren't i was gonna say big events they weren't big back then only a yeah. couple teams and barely if anyone in the crowd but it was just like so cool to me i was like i want to be on that stage one day playing call of duty like that's just so awesome and uh, i kept grinding i would i would have school because i was still like 
I think I was 10 years old when I started playing COD 4. So I'd have school, baseball practice, soccer practice for a little bit. And then I would say around Modern Warfare 3 is when I went to my first local LAN event. Going to that local LAN was like really gave me like extra passion and drive to want to becoming a pro player because uh, when you like play a tournament in real life in person like it's a whole new atmosphere it's so much fun people are talking trash you're winning money uh it's just like i can't even explain it it's just one of the best things about gaming is just playing on land in front of an audience then um in black ops 2 that's when i went to my first major event in uh anaheim yeah anaheim i had my dad drive me there uh, I found a team a day before the event. I think oh, my wow. team was uh, Kalani. He was like an old school pro back I remember, in the day. I remember yep. Kalani, yep. Um, Fanatic, he was like an old school COD 4 player too. Okay. He like kind of stopped playing like as COD. Pre like after like Black Ops 2, he stopped playing. And then Nihil, who's still in the community a little bit. Yeah. And then we got ended up getting like 29th through 32nd at our first major LAN event. And... Finding a team right the day before, beating a decent couple decent players and like yeah. uh, playing well. Not I kind of yeah, it was a decent start, and I actually met accuracy there. And then at the end of Black Ops Two, I filled in for Realize after he got hit offline in a tournament with like uh, Sender Diabolic. I forgot who the fourth was. Sorry, fourth person, <laughs> I forgot. But uh, we ended up winning the tournament. It was like the the biggest online tournament at the end of Black Ops Two. Uh -huh. And I remember we won it. Uh, I got a little bit of cash because I filled in, and we beat some top pros. And I remember replays. Chris Crowder he tweeted me it was like, "Oh, like do I have to look out for some new talent?" And at the time, I got like up to 500 followers that night on Twitter. I was like, "Mine was like, oh my god, you're hyped!" Like, I got like 300 followers tonight after winning this Let's tournament. Go. This is the best day ever. <laughs> and um, and then I became like one of the biggest warriors, online warriors in Ghost. Went to a couple land events. Did really well on land. And uh, got an opportunity to join Rise. From Rise, I left to join Denial at the beginning of Advanced Warfare. And then that's yep. kind of when I uh, was on like a top team. And then went to the Call of Duty Championships and uh, won it. And ever since then, after that, we played a couple of events and then joined FaZe. And then I was on FaZe yeah. for a super long time. So would you say the, the 2015 season, winning champs, was that the moment for you where you knew like this is what you're going to do for a long time? Like make it your career? Yeah, um, that was definitely it. Uh, I was still in high school at the time, so yeah. I was like making sure I was had to focus on my grades, still getting good grades or at least passing grades. And yeah, uh, we right. that season we actually had like fifteen, like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen events, some insane so amount, so many events, the man. most we've ever had. We went to Columbus yeah. every other weekend. It, it felt like it was fun though. It was fun, um, but I missed a lot of days of school. Uh, luckily, I was able to have good enough grades to where the school didn't hate me and try and kick me out or anything. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I knew like after I won the world championship, like, like this, this is a huge opportunity uh, to try and further my career, see how many more times I can win and how successful of a college career I can, career I can have. And that's why uh, I went to college for a day and I had to take a trip soon after that day. So I kind of told my parents, I'm like, look, college, it's always going to be there. Being yeah. a professional Call of Duty player, I, I work lots and lots of years for it. So I'm right. going to try and ride this opportunity out and see where I could take it. That's just what I've been doing ever since. Uh, especially having so much success uh, at a young age, too. It's like if if there's a moment for you to take it, especially for what you're able to do in the 2015 season, it's like you just kind of got you got to go for it at that point. Yeah. Like that amount of success is like sort of the same thing for me when I was younger, too. It's like. I started making waves in Modern Warfare 2. And like when you have that success right away, you kind of know, don't you? Like yeah. and when you start having success and you start finding yourself around like better players and you, you, you it builds yeah. like this crazy sort of confidence. So good for you, man. It's been amazing to watch your career uh, sort of thrive. And man, all the different years on phase and the amount of upsets that your teams have been able to pull off in Call of Duty history has been amazing to watch, dude. So props to you. Thank you. To finish out the Game Changers portion of the episode today, the last one I got for you is, uh, yeah, you said it before, you're a Cali boy. So now you find yourself on New York. How is that? How, how, how are you enjoying New York in, compar in comparison to Cali? Okay, so I went from coast to coast, and yep. uh, growing up in California, I was always outside, perfect weather, always playing sports when I wasn't inside gaming, 
And now I went to New York. Um, the winter was tough. I'm not going to lie. The winter was really tough. Real cold, huh? Because like, it's just like always <laughs> cold outside. Like You wear a big jacket when you're outside, but then you get inside, so you have to take your jacket off. And I just wasn't used right. to like having to wear a huge jacket. Also, after the winter happened, I was like, oh, it's starting to get warm now. And next thing you know, global pandemic. And I was like, well, can't go outside anymore in the city either. And so I've been just staying, staying inside a lot, grinding. Um, Super pale, probably compared to when I first got here. But uh, <laughs> hopefully, I've been progressing my skills, my team skills, and trying to uh, find some success in the Call of Duty community. We're both Cali boys. I'm in Texas now. You're in New York. Look at us, man. We're, we're growing up. Growing up. Growing hey, up a little make bit. It, make it, making sacrifices, though, is what it's all about, straight <laughs> yeah. up. Well, that's going to do for the, the game changers portion. Moving on now. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen the other Barracks episodes so far, but what we're going to do now couple. is couple. we're hip firing a little bit. We're putting 90 seconds on the clock. Ooh. All right. All You're right. competing against the other players so far. Um, as far as I know, the number one player we have is Silly. He got 15 questions right on the previous episode. So wow. you, you have your work cut out for you yeah. for sure. Uh, basically, I'm going to try and fire off these questions as fast as possible for you in 90 seconds. If you don't like it, just tell me to skip. We'll move on. We'll try and get through as many as we can in the 90 seconds. It, Are you ready? Matter? I'm ready, but does it, I have a question. Yep. Does it matter if I get any wrong? Like, does that hurt my score? Or just try and get as many right as you can? D just try and get as many right okay. as you can. It, it, you just go okay. for it. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. So 90 seconds on the clock. I'm going to start in three, two, one. Who has more total kills in the league, you or Temp? Me. Who, who currently has the most total deaths on the subliners? Zuma. Who has the most s and plants on the subliners? Um. Name a player on the Toronto Ultra. Methods. Which team currently has an over higher overall KD, Mutineers or Rocker? Rocker. What player currently has the highest overall KD in the league? Guys. Who is the oldest player in the league? Play, sir. Which COD game had the crash multiplayer map? On a Faster. Come on. Which COD game had Nuketown? Black Ops 1. Which COD game had Hijacked? Black Ops 2. Uh, which COD game had Estate? MW2. Which COD game had Favela? MW2. What is Captain McTavish's nickname for the COD single so, player campaigns? Which player has won the most COD tournaments? From 6. Which team is Aqua on? I like Grillos. Crowder coaches which team? Atlanta Phase. Which game developer created the first Call of Duty? Infinity Ward. How many COD games are there total? 14. Boom. Okay. You did well. You got the answers done within the time limit. This okay. is good. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. 14, Dill. That's, that's not Damn. too bad. That's not too bad. I'll take it. You know what? It's not going to get you tied for first because Silly's got 15, but 14. Close. That puts you in number two. I'll take that. That's not bad at I'll all. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you, that's you, you smoked everyone else. Mox, Envoy, Crim6, Simp, Wuskin. You did much better than them. Hey, well let's done. Let's go. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed on one of them. The, the S&D Plants one, Mac. Oh, it was Mac? Are you mad at, are, are you mad at that one? It was Mac. I just feel like since we have had him on yeah. team that long, that's, that's why it kind of caught me off guard. About. It was the bomb guy before the roster change too. That's actually crazy. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Okay. Wait. Well, to, oh no, I messed that up. I could have tied it. It's all good. It's <laughs> yeah, all good. It's all good. It's all good. You next did well. season. Hopefully, I'll get. I'll get it. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Well done in the hip fire segment. Coming up next, folks. We have staying connected. Dylan, I got a surprise for you, buddy. What's that? We What's surprise, that, Tyler? We, we have a surprise guest on the line. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Who is it? We have your teammate, Mac, the legend, the young god. Hey, what's good, young goat? What's Let's good, go, young what's going god? On? How you doing, What's bro? going on, buddy? Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Appreciate it. Long time no talk. <laughs> All right, Mac. Let's hop right into it, man. Uh, up and comer, rookie, absolutely slaying out. When the, when the subliners made this roster change... You came in and they saw immediate change in, in placements and how they looked overall, the pace of the game, 
Uh, talk to me a little bit about that moment when you when you got the call, when you got the email, whatever it was, when you figured out that you were going to get an opportunity on a CDL team. How did that feel, dude? It was definitely a very rewarding experience. I just remember like getting up one day, like getting on for scrims and then just like getting the the DM like, yo, we're interested to, to pick you up. And it's like all the hard work finally is paying off. It's definitely a, a sigh of relief for sure. Very excited. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's awesome to see you sort of take that opportunity and snowball it. And you've been playing so damn well in the league so far. Um, how, how does it feel some of the some of the backlash from some other players in the league maybe calling you an online or things like that <laughs> does that affect you at all do you just no. laugh it off uh, uh, yeah it's definitely just laugh yeah, that dunks stuff on off <laughs> <laughs> dunk it on them yeah right? it's definitely all a lot of fun to mess is, with them yeah all you can do is play to the best of your ability you've been playing great man it's been a, a lot of fun to, to watch you in the league thus far um to snowball off with that point a little bit dylan what was the uh I guess the team talk, what, were, you, were you looking at a couple of different people or did you have your eyes on Mac the entire time when you guys knew that you're going to try and make a roster change happen? Uh, what did that process look like for you guys? Um, honestly, like we just knew we had to make a change soon, just the way things were going. And we've heard of Mac. We've only, we only really saw him play a couple of times. It's not like he was like, streaming all the time and you were always able to see how good he was. Yeah. But like he did well at the uh, Minnesota Open. I'm pretty sure he got like second. At that event, right, Mac? Yeah, second. Yeah, he got second there, and he played well. And uh, I think I remember playing in hens with him like one time, and he was just kind of like the, our number one and only player we had in mind. Like we had a couple others, but it was just like mainly Mac. We're like, okay, like we're gonna we're gonna get Mac and see how this guy is. Like we don't know if he was gonna be super nasty. Like we didn't know like his potential because we just haven't seen him too much. But then we got him, and he's one of the best players in the game right now. So it's been an incredible pickup. That's awesome, man. You'd love to hear that. Mac, talk to me a little bit about transitioning from like an amateur roster, an amateur practice environment over to a professional practice environment. What were, give me like one or two main things that you notice that's different with like the, the practice regiment uh, now that you're on, you know, uh, a CDL team. Um, practice is definitely like a little bit more, I don't know if in, intense is the word to say, but like, yeah. You were definitely putting in a lot more effort to fine tune some things compared to like an amateur team. Gotcha. But like, as far as like playing, obviously you're playing way better teams, but definitely we're still playing like the same like scrim block on my am team. Just like practice is way more intense and right. Yeah, just trying a lot harder for sure. That's awesome. All right, I uh, I want I want potentially some spicy answers for this next one. Both of you. Uh, uh, Dylan, Dylan, you start. Okay. If you had to change one thing about Max gameplay, what would it be? <laughs> well, whether it be comms, whether it be you know, give me, give me something good here. Critique a little bit. Okay. Constructive Go ahead, criticism Dylan. never hurt anybody. Some constructive yeah, yeah. criticism. Okay. Yep. Um, honestly, one thing about a young player being super talented and being able to kill anyone at any range with any weapon, sometimes Mac will. He, everyone ego chows, but he'll yep. ego chow and keep ego chowling until like he dies. Whereas like he can get like a two three piece, <laughs> and then like you know you can start working together with your teammates, like helping you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I would say he did that a lot more when he like first joined. Like he just kept chowling till like he died. But now he like he'll get a kill, get a two, get a three piece, and then like he'll work together with the team better. So that was one of like gotcha. the first things that we like noticed that like he just like ego chows and does it till he dies. But yeah, now you need, a, you need a heat check every yeah, once in a while. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> now he's uh, a lot more in the team game and uh, it's making it, make it easier for him to get more pieces than everyone. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's a good one. He kind of complimented you on, yeah, yeah, like complimented yeah. you on this side too. Okay. Mac, your turn. Give me something. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, he's, he's ready for this one. Nah, nah, oh. I'm, nah, nah, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I could say like one like thing. Like I'm sure a lot of people have, are going to give the same answer I'm about to give, but like. Yeah, he's pretty trash. I know <laughs> there's like a lot to pick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> there's, oh, like, God. I, I don't know. I couldn't like, <laughs> there's not like one thing that stands out from Dill's gameplay that's like, oh, that needs to be fixed. Like, I don't know. Yeah. What is it, man? Just say it, man. Just say it. Do you talk too much? It's got to be, the, it's gotta be the comms, man. Uh, the yeah. comms? Maybe like in the mix, maybe you won't say something. I, like that's the only thing I can think of. Like, I don't know. Step with the comms, man. Sheesh. Okay, I got you, bro. I got you. 
<clears throat> hey, there you go. So, so comms and then a little heat check on the other side. <laughs> All right. I like that a lot. Uh, moving on now, uh, outside of the game a little bit. Um, what do you guys do for fun outside of playing COD? I know you guys are grinding a lot. Big tournaments coming up. Yeah. Um, what, what are you guys doing? I know it's like an interesting time with, with the COVID and everything like that. But uh, yeah. whether it be playing other games, what, what do you two find uh, to to do outside of playing COD? Um, you can go first. We actually, yeah, I'll go first. We sometimes order food, whether it's before like before practice, and then just go up on our rooftop of our apartment uh, building and kind of just okay. chill, have a dope view of the city, get some sun too. That's honestly uh, one of the best times. Like you just feel, it feels so it's so nice outside. Feel the sun beaming on you, and then you're just chilling with your boys, eating some good food, having a good time. So that's one of the things I uh, nice. that's been fun to do in New York. Vibing. Yep. Yeah. Mac, what about you? Um, I mean, we're definitely limited, of course, because of, you know, the yeah. virus and stuff. But yeah, like what Dill says, the rooftop is definitely a fun time. Um, but other than that, like just playing games, <laughs> staying inside, playing games. I don't think Max went outside. Peterson's I think he's went outside like twice. I've been, I've been uh, I know that. Times, but. I know that grind, bro. I'm yeah. grinding too. I'm, I'm never going outside. <laughs> yep. Well, Mac, thank you so much, man. It, it was the first time sort of meeting you. Mm-hmm. Nice to meet you, man. You're, Likewise. You seem like a nice dude. You're an absolute beast, dude. Keep up what you're doing. Uh, if you're able to make waves like this uh, so early on in, in your career, I can only, uh, I can't wait to see what else you can do uh, leading on. And uh, good luck to you for the rest of your buddy. Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks, bud. Next up, Dill, we're going to do some VOD review. All right. Oh, God. It's from the Florida Home Series. After being down 4-0, then 5-2 down, okay. there's a big comeback from you guys. Um, well, honestly, this first round right here when we're down 5-2, they get the first two kills on Temp and myself. So, doom accuracy and Mac. Wait, how do you run? Oh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not looking good when I'm watching it back. But, yeah, Mac and uh, Tommy get an insane 2v4 to even keep us in the game. And... Uh, this is one of those situations where Florida, you could tell by the way they were moving on the map, they had so much confidence, they had the momentum, so they just instant went for all the map control, because they're up 5-2, so they're feeling good. Uh, luckily, with Tommy and Mag, were able to clutch pretty much a 2v5, and to keep us in the game, and uh, I'll, I'm going to skip forward to the next round right there, but that was just an insane clutch, because I thought we lost the round for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so did I. Florida's just playing for map control. I don't see just sprint down bottom. I get through the doors, bait for temp. Temp gets a kill, is able to play his life, and uh, then Fox pinches me. I'm pretty sure it's a two piece on Donnie. Oh my god, what is this Life's SND? It's what a is mess. This? Yeah, Dude, this is it's, insane. It's, it's bottom middle armor Mazda is what it is. Yeah, it's, bottom, a mess. it's crazy. Like, people are sliding in doorways, throwing nades, yep. stuns. Like, everything is just daddy, doors daddy busting open. Daddy timings getting yep. flanked. You never know, man. All that. So uh, it gets, somehow gets down to a 2v1 after all the mixiness happened. And uh, back in Lamar, playing versus Caesar. They wrap A to plant, get the bomb down. Easy win. Very controlled clutch. But the first beginning of the round was kind of, kind of insane. Yeah, now sure. it's 5-4. And yeah. we're... We're just trying to play for B in like middle control because we know that Florida likes to play middle and work towards B, the B site very often. So um, we're just waiting, waiting. We kind of want to force them to make a play because now that we won a couple rounds, they're probably like, uh oh, like these guys are coming back. And um, we got a first blood. Tem gets an aid kill. And now we have numbers on a defense on Ramaza. So we have site control, we have middle control. We know that their options are very limited. They just try to throw a smoke and run through it, and we're able to get a couple kills. Uh, when when smoke gets thrown, it gets kind of random, but luckily we're able to get them through the smoke and push it to a round 11. H- higher level talking point now. When it comes to like mid round calls or, or round uh, shot calling, especially leading into like a round 11, which we're about to see, who, who's the guy stepping up on your team to make that call? Um, I would say the switch uh, up depending on the situation yeah, or I feel like I would have to go with hemp a lot of the time, but okay. really whoever's like feeling this, themselves at the moment, whoever's like, frying. yeah, whoever's like, like playing well or just has like been studying their gameplay really well and knows like an opening in their setup or what they're about to yeah. do. But I would say, uh, temp gives a lot of the round 11 shot calls and then accuracy probably second. And then sometimes I'll do it depending if I think, uh, I have a strategy that could work, but I'd probably say 
Tem does it the most because he loves Ramaza. We'll talk more on that. Walk me through this last round. Big first blood there from Mac. Tommy follows up with another two. Mazuma, uh oh, uh oh, Miles, he's all falling apart. That was honestly just an easy read because uh, you don't really. Teams usually don't expect someone to be top three and on the. Yeah, that is rare. Usually you stick like the one guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once Matt got the kill, they tried to hit the outer bridge and Tommy was right there waiting for them. And once they got those three kills, we pretty much knew it was over. Guys, this back. What? Oh, it was a ball. We saw the other people shooting there. Like, we kind of knew we had him trapped right there. Just don't over-challenge and throw our lives away and we're going to win it. And uh, that's what we did. But an insane comeback versus Florida right there. And we've actually had a couple crazy comebacks on Ramaza versus Florida. Uh, so that's pretty good. What's your favorite SND map in Modern Warfare? My favorite SND map? Uh, probably Arklov Peak, Search and Destroy. Yeah. I feel like that map plays really well in 5 That's my favorite too. Yeah. Like, you can just maneuver the map so well. Like, you could smoke off this cross, work this lane. You can, like, get the process of elimination, figure out where people are, and take advantage of that bomb site over here because you know they're stacked over there. Like, I just love, like, the mind games that go into Search and Destroy and, like, the yeah. decoys and the fakes and everything. Like, Search and Destroy is just a really fun game mode. Yeah, you've always been an S and D guy for sure. I, I definitely love some search and destroy. I like that a lot. Well, thank you so much for walking me through that crazy uh, comeback. You don't see very many many of them, especially in Modern Warfare. But uh, was it was awesome to hear your thoughts on, on that one? A big win versus the Mutineers. Definitely. Coming up next, we have the top three. So, what I need from you? Uh oh. Is I need three names. Well, okay. overall, it's going to be okay. six, but but okay. three for each. So, if you had to pick, how first off, how much Warzone do you play? Probably a hundred forty-ish wins. Okay, so, so a, de a decent amount. You dabble. Yeah, you dabble. I, I dabble. Um, it depends if a tournament's coming up. Like I usually will take a week or two off. If you're if you're trying to build like the sweatiest try-hard squad for wins for comp uh, competition, a tournament. Who's the three people that you're picking for your Warzone team? Does this have to be players in the Call of Duty League? Let's do everyone I can, I can beside. Do don't don't pick your team. No one what from your team. Okay. Give me give me three. This is for try hard. Like I need to win a tournament. Okay. Well, Warzone. I do gotta, I do got to give a shout out to uh, Average Joe Wo, Gangsta Salute, okay. and Exact because that was my team in the Nick Merckx oh. tournament. We won the first, we I won know the them. qualifier. We won the qualifier to make it. They are very, very good. And then uh, I took a little break because I had some CDL tournaments. We came back and played the Nick Mertz, like the MFAM Gauntlet, the real one, the big one. Yeah. And we got third in that. So shout out to them for helping me with that. Uh, they, they are definitely my squad for the foreseeable future in Warzone tournaments. Um, nice. But in the COD League, if I had to pick, I feel like you got to go formal. Guys just always yeah. insane at Battle Royales, especially COD ones. Like he just has some insane clips. So yep. formal. And then you got to pick Priest, though. I mean, he's been frying. He's nuts at Warzone. Been, I've seen all the clips. He's been The, the and, world record attempts. Okay. Yes, yes. And I think i got to go with Selium as the last one. MC is Damn. really good, too. I've, been, I've played a lot with uh, Priest and Selium. They play super fast pace, and I just love running with them and just trying to wipe out squads. And no chance. Bro, no, you did it again! That kill records and crazy stuff. So I think that would have to be my squad. Nice. I like that a lot. And then... We're gonna switch it up now. This is for purely laughs entertainment. Give me, give me three more. Just you. Who cares if you win a game? You're doing dumb stuff on the map. Uh, who, if you're just trying to clown around and have some fun, whether it be your friends from back home, like who, who are you picking? Okay. Um, I feel like I have to pick Temp. Donnie Temp. Uh, Temp. <laughs> very okay. big jokester. Like he loves to roast people, but he like does it in good fun. Like he never really has like a. Yeah. He's like super serious about roasting them. He just likes to do it for fun. And uh, so Donnie Temp for sure. Yeah. Sam's gonna get on the. Oh, 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 no way. I think I would have to get Dashy. I feel like Dashy. Okay. Bruce is always like he's always laughing, cracking jokes, clown. smiling. Like he's always just like good vibes and uh, would be really fun to play with. And I need one more. I think I pick Stump. I think Seth. Because okay. I feel like Seth is always cracking jokes too. Like in all his yeah. scrims and like all his Warzone streams and YouTube. Like he's always cracking jokes. And so he's always good vibes as well. Uh, I think that would be a nice squad. Honestly, that, that's a really damn good squad for if you're trying to win a tournament too. <laughs> <laughs> no BS. You'd be my number one pick, though, if I could pick someone outside of the CD. Honestly, right I was now. trying to get, yeah. I was trying to bait you into picking me. Like, come on, man! Like, uh, you would definitely be my number one yeah. overall. But we had to keep it, like inside yeah, the CDL, yeah, so yeah, for, like yeah. 
I'm I'm serious. I'm serious. Dude. You're not you're not number one overall. Viewer, viewers, you're the cop out. Unbelievable. I'll give you the Pat Mahomes no, contract. <laughs> Yo, that's a lot. That's a, that's a good amount of cash for that's sure. A, that's a good amount of cash. <laughs> Great amount. <laughs> All right, dude. Thanks for playing along. Next up, we got Teeps takes. In this one, Dylan, I'm going to give you my quick hot takes on Call of Duty League teams, players, and recent events. So I'm going to give you my take on the situation. And then you're going to follow up and let me know if you agree, disagree. For for viewers, get involved in the comments too. I want your takes as well along to go with our takes. Yep. Get involved in, in the comments and I'd like to see what you guys have to say. I want to hear all of them. Number one, we got the news. It's not great news. Oh, God. CDL 2020 season playoffs and championship weekend will be played online. Ah, oh, man, this is such a, a loaded topic. I think we all know the reason why. It's all about player safety. Like all it takes is one person to potentially get sick if you do try and have an, a live event somewhere. And with with how everything's going in the world lately, I I completely understand the decision. But man, it, it's tough to ignore the fact that you have this crazy prize pool millions and millions of dollars and and i know both of us know the the trials and tribulations of playing online 2020 has just been a very interesting year the one thing i do want to say is like we all just we all need to make the best of it and, and try and get through these tough times as much as we can i think we all just want the call of duty scene to keep growing and prospering and um what are your thoughts and how does it affect you mentally knowing that you're playing such a huge tournament online it's 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 tough as you know as like you said there's so many variables that can go into it um i think they made the correct decision or the right decision by uh not having it on land because i can only imagine what would have happened if they hosted a tournament on land took all the precautions and someone still got sick and gave it to a few right. other people like uh, it would just it would just be way too bad if they had to be responsible for that so i can completely understand the decision and it does suck that it has to happen like we have to play a huge tournament online but at the end of the day um the way I look at it, it's it's only one season. It's only one tournament that is played online. Uh, it would be much worse if someone was to get sick, and who knows what could possibly happen. Uh, it's just too big of a risk for anyone to take, and I'm glad that they care about us enough to not force us into that like difficult scenario. I of course wish there could have been like a solution, like maybe the top four teams go to land or something like this, but still, yeah. it's just very very risky and uh they would take so t so many steps to make it safe to do it so i understand why uh we have to play this online but may the cod gods be in your favor for that tournament and uh it's a lot of money <laughs> to win for like the fact that you can it's win crazy the fact that you can win that much money from home it, it has to be the most anyone's ever won from esport from home like without a doubt right it has You'll be to winning be. racks from that chair from right home. there that chair you're sitting in Racks. That's just absurd, but uh, it's a very tough situation, and yeah. uh, I can I cannot wait for Land to come back because there's literally no better feeling than getting on that main stage right before a match and just like locking in. Uh, so I can't yeah. wait for that, and also just be able to see our supporters and all the quality supporters in the community in person again, and just be able to connect with them. Uh, so hopefully the for sooner sure. the better, but uh, it's understandable why we couldn't do it at the end of the season. It's weird not like going to events consistently, right? For as yeah. like long as we kind of been doing this, it's like it's, it, it feels very odd. I don't it's know. It's very strange. Like I can play in a tournament and then upload a YouTube video and stream that same day when I'm yeah. supposed to be at an event. But it, it's right. like the craziest thing ever. Like it's if I feel so off when I'm doing it. Next one. This one's kind of funny. Does your PS4 run loud when you're playing Modern Warfare or Warzone? Does your thing? Does it sound like it's taken off? Not like a spaceship. Yes, I uh, tweeted a clip the other day, and it was, it was just like, Rrr! like it sounded like <laughs> chainsaw, lawnmower, jet engine. Like, I actually bought some compressed air though to try and clean it. I haven't cleaned it yeah. yet, but I probably should because there is a lot of dust in there right now. Those um, fans are working overtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel bad for the fans. <laughs> I gotta help them out a little bit. Or I actually got like a couple, uh, a couple times I've got like your PS4 is overheating. It's turning off. I've got that notification, yeah. so I definitely should. Take care of my baby a little bit, for sure. I got a fun game. In the comments, as soon as you watch this part of the video, on a scale of 1 to 10, how loud does your PlayStation get when you're playing <laughs> Modern Warfare or Warzone? I want to—I better see some good numbers there. All yeah, right? 10 being jet engine. <laughs> 
Uh, that's going to do it for Teeps Takes. Dylan, thank you so much for giving me your uh, your opinions on some of these things. Crazy times in the Call of Duty League right now. Uh, big news with the champs uh, you know, being played online, the GAs. I-, I wish you the best of luck. And like you said, the COD gods, I hope they're forever in your favor. You know, Thank on you. Your you side. as well. You as well in all your Warzone drops. <laughs> he, right, dude? <laughs> I, need, I need good servers. I need to drop some 30 bombs, man. The yep. people love it. Yep. <laughs> Moving on. We got a fun segment. Okay. I like that. Incoming. So we got some clips from the CDL broadcast. We bleeped out a word, <laughs> a keyword from the broadcast, and your job is to try and guess what the bleeped out word is. So we have some clips from the New York Subliners, your team versus Florida Mutineers at the Paris Legion Home Series. Let's play in the first one in three, two, one. That'll stop as Attach is able to chain together the headshots and quickly Frosty and a 1v4. Ooh. They just go straight up. Say, you know what? Screw it. Let's go guns blazing. <laughs> but that, I feel like he said a whole sentence during that whole during that <laughs> bleep. It's kind of a long bleep. Yeah. That's a tough one, dude. Wait, that's usually, a really tough one. Come on. Usually I have like a, a couple of words that I maybe pick from. This one. I'm gonna, he could have said luck, a lot dude. of stuff. I'm glad I'm not playing. This is on you, man. Straight up a ravine and go for it? I don't even know. They bleeped out the whole sentence. <laughs> I, I, it's supposed to be one word. Yeah. <laughs> that was like at least four or five words, I feel like. Yeah. I have no clue. Okay. No clue. Or he, he's he's chalking it. I'm saying they went straight up ravine or something. Straight up a ravine, okay. <laughs> I don't know. That'll stop as Attach is able to chain together the headshots and quickly Frosty and a 1v4. Ooh. They just go straight up aggression. They say, you know what? Screw it. Let's go guns blazing. Straight up aggression. That's a tough one, they man. They go straight up aggression. Like that? Come on. I thought it was one word. Okay. That's hey, a tough one. Yeah, that, right. was, that was tough. I'm Maybe not, I'm not gonna even going to... Bl- let's open the second one. It's yeah, got to be easier. Let's see. Yeah. That was one of the most difficult ones we've had on this episode, or on this <laughs> on this show. Joey and his big vocabulary, man. I swear. I know, right? <laughs> Jeez, man. All right, you got the second one opened up? Yeah, I have it open. All right, play it in three, two, one. <laughs> you yeah. know they've had recent success. You're going to just yeah. carry that momentum. Oh, well, momentum's not doing... <laughs> ...right now. His subplot is now up 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> just knowing Clint, yeah, knowing, knowing Maven. Could, yeah, he like, could have said anything. <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. Uh, Maven has a little bit of a potty mouth sometimes. So yes. I think that's why we all know, know just and knowing love him. Just knowing him. <laughs> all right. Uh, what are you going with? Let I me think, know. If you, listen again. If I think we'll listen again one more time. Yeah, yeah go for it. Go for it. You're going to just yeah. carry that momentum. Well, momentum's not doing... Right Wait, now. did he curse? It's cursed because I don't make him curse sometimes. I don't think he's cursing on broadcast. I'm, I'm saying not a curse word. Not a curse word. This one. I have to go with absolutely nothing. Okay. I don't know. Hopefully, it's somewhere near it. Uh, I'll open up the answer right now. Open up the answer. All right. We'll play the answer in three, two, one. <laughs> you yeah. know they've had recent success. You're gonna just yeah. carry that momentum. Well, Momentum's not doing diddly squat right now. Is diddly squat? <laughs> diddly squat? <laughs> like, what kind of vocab? Like, yeah. there's Joey D vocabulary, then there's Clint vocabulary. Diddly like, diddly squat. squat. You Come got... Uh, honestly, those were, those were impossible. <laughs> diddly there, squat? There's, there's no <laughs> way. When's the last time you heard someone say diddly squat? <laughs> I, I've seen some very easy ones on this show. I got your back. You, you got Tyler. set up. Thank you. I got set up for I, sure. If I, I never would have thought I would <laughs> hear Maven say diddly yeah, squat. No yeah, way. Yeah, I was nowhere near, but nowhere near Over that. two, but honestly, yeah. I would have got, I would have got those wrongs too. That's uh, tough. Um, tough, tough unbelievable. Uh, that's it. We're done. You did it. We're done. We're through. Oh, I went too fast. Dude, thank you so much for joining me, man. Honestly, Dylan, uh, you're a stand-up guy. It's been amazing seeing you sort of grow up in this scene with some crazy clutches, some crazy comebacks, a lot of crazy plays from you throughout the years. Uh, I have a lot of respect for your gameplay and how you handle yourself as a person in this community. And I got a lot of props for you, man. Thank you so much for joining me on the episode today. Hey, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you. Keep frying in Warzone, GOAT.
My man, my <laughs> man. Good luck in the rest of the season, and uh, you. hopefully you guys can uh, do well going into champs. Thank you, thank you. May the car guys be on our side. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Barracks presented by Metro by T-Mobile, the number one brand in prepaid. Make sure to check out our other episodes and subscribe to the COD League YouTube. We'll see you next time for the next episode.